Hi, and welcome to this webinar on how to enhance the effect of knowledge management. So before we begin, we'll go through some practical information. All participants' microphones are automatically muted, so we ask that you instead ask all of your questions in the questions window. We can collect and answer them all at the end of the webinar. And also a recording of today's webinar will be sent out to you all afterwards. So with that said, let's have a quick glance at the agenda here for the webinar. Today you will learn about how Service Desk can deliver timely first class support to limited resources by working effectively with knowledge management and building a quality knowledge base. What factors motivate the staff so that they feel involved and engaged both in their own professional role and achieve the objectives of the organization? So simply put, how do you make knowledge valuable and fun? A brief background here about who Comaround is. Comaround have offices in San Francisco, Stockholm, and in Oslo. Our customers use our self-service and knowledge tool, Comaround Knowledge, in over 100 countries around the globe. We are experts on knowledge-centered service and self-service solutions with more than 20 years of experience in the industry. We are the market leader in Europe and steadily growing in the US market. All of our customers have one common interest, to become leaders in knowledge sharing with our innovative and KCS verified tool, Come Around Knowledge, and working with the best practice methodology known as knowledge-centered service. My name is Sebastian Teeling, and I'm a CSU Knowledge Specialist at Comround. I specialize in helping service desks and organizations achieve effective knowledge management handling, implementing new knowledge management strategies, and help introduce self-service solutions. I encourage you all to network with me on LinkedIn. So one of my favorite tasks is visiting organizations and analyzing and evaluating how their service centers are working. Talk to their employees, observe existing work, their routines, habits, and analyze how the organizational work culture looks like. It's always exciting, and I learn something new every time. My specialty is suggesting areas for improvements, process changes, and helping the organizations get the best out of the resource, resources available. And also revisiting the organizations later on and seeing all the positive changes made is incredibly rewarding for me. My goal during the webinar today is to share a bit of my passion with you so that you can get some good tips on your journey toward better and more successful knowledge management. So let's begin with some basic information. So we ask ourselves, what do we know about knowledge? Each service department I meet are busy with different things. There are often so many things that the service desk agents, or knowledge workers, as I like to call them, are firefighting instead of being proactive and planning ahead. The management set goals on their daily performance, such as the number of cases closed and how long the average response time is. Knowledge management strategies are often not prioritized or highlighted. So why is it that knowledge, something so important that is used all the time, every day, it's not more prioritized at service departments. When I question the agents, asking them how valuable is your knowledge, or who is responsible for knowledge in your organization, and what do you do with new knowledge, it is rare that they know what to answer. I've noticed that service departments usually view knowledge management as an afterthought, not as a part of their daily work process. Knowledge is everywhere. Knowledge is the heart of all service organizations. That is how agents respond to problems and learn about the systems they're responsible for. There are many well-known bottlenecks that must be unclogged to create the ultimate knowledge center. Common problems, such as too many complicated processes, not enough time, content that is not written from the customer's perspective, 
And perhaps the most common problem, customers cannot find what they're looking for. So what is data for one person? It may be information to the next person and knowledge to a third person. How? Take tomorrow's weather forecast, for example. If I tell my four-year-old cousin that it will be overcast tomorrow and possibly an inch of rain, she will probably look at me with a big question mark on her face. It's only data for her. If I say the same thing to my colleague, she's likely to bring an umbrella to work tomorrow. That's good information. But if I share the weather forecast with a local farmer, he will probably be very happy because the harvest needs rain and he can start preparing for where any excess water should go. This is valuable knowledge for him. So knowledge is valuable information on which you can act upon. Think about your own team, your service desk, your entire organization. How can we use the collective knowledge and make it available and useful for all? KCS is an established methodology for knowledge management, where knowledge articles is the result of problem solving. KCS was formerly known as knowledge-centered support, but recently changed its name to knowledge-centered service, as it applies to all departments, not only the support. Knowledge is the core of KCS. The methodology KCS solves service department challenges and enables a better internal and external knowledge sharing. A KCS-focused service organization enables employees to faster answer incoming questions, easier solve complex problems, provide consistent responses, and activates the important self-service to customers. The same solutions are improved, reused, and shared over again in the organization. Knowledge management is integrated throughout the entire support process and quickly provides results. Now, while we will not go too deep into KCS here now, uh, we will touch on some of its key advantages here. So the traditional model of working with knowledge is based on knowledge from few to many. KCS is unique because it's based on a from many to many model. KCS is a sophisticated model because it's driven by demand and therefore is self-correcting. This is because KCS is based on the scientific concept of double loop learning. So as a result, new articles are created as a byproduct of agents' daily work routines. Content is improved based on demand, and only the content that is used is updated. We're no longer guessing which articles to work with and spend time on. KCS creates tremendous value for all information and knowledge intensive organizations. If you always want an up-to-date knowledge base that you can open up for self-service, then you should work with KCS. Did you know that a good self-service portal solves as many as 10 times the number of cases in the first line? KCS also represents a shift in how we think. In order to work with and maintain KCS, it requires a new way of working with people, metrics, and processes. Part of this is to recognize our agents when they make an effort to learn, collaborate, share, and improve. Some other byproducts of introducing KCS to the organization is a shorter onboarding period for new employees, more satisfied employees, and customers who feel prioritized. So imagine that this iceberg is the amount of issues handled today. We meet many service organizations and service desks that focus exclusively on the tip of the iceberg. But beneath the surface are all the problems and issues that never reach your service desk. The problem is that these issues are increasing. To meet the demand, we need new and different support channels, support strategies, and objectives. 
My experience is that reducing phone calls is not always the main issue. It is more a question of how we respond to new patterns and behaviors and how we use new technology to support closer to the customer. I recommend all of you to dive down and look at your icebergs, create a strategy for how you can easier, more efficiently manage the iceberg. What do customers want? So according to research, 91% of customers really do prefer self-service if it is available and tailored to their needs. As some of you may already know, self-service will require you to consider some new measures. In order to know what value you have and what value you are creating, you have to measure. Customer loyalty and satisfaction. How satisfied are your customers with the support environment? Are you doing such a great job that customers feel a sense of loyalty? The number of solved cases. Measure the number of solved cases. It's very important here to include those cases that are resolved directly by self-service. And remember, self-service can solve up to 10 times as much as first-line support. Self-service enables us to handle many more questions. Value reduced, value of reduced number of incoming calls. The value of solving customer problems through the self-service on the web instead of registering a case. The cost of a customer solving a problem themselves via self-service is much lower than solving a case in the first line support. Use of self-service. What percentage of users use the self-service before a case is submitted? We need to monitor this. Self-service success. How long does it take for users to find what they're looking for through self-service? And more interesting is what is their success rate? And lastly, support cost. We need to consider how much support costs today. What is the cost per case? More and more, we should strive to measure actual outcomes and the value that they create. So here is a case study from Stockholm University in Sweden. As you see, they handle a large amount of users, over 55,000 students and staff. We see the large gap between cases dealt with through traditional methods compared to self-service. More than 83% of their cases are received through self-service today. The capacity of resolving cases has really improved dramatically. Their value of self-service is exceptional, with a resolution rate of 84% from all incoming self-service cases. This value does not go unnoticed for them. So what is it that creates value? Here are a few buzzwords. We can ask ourselves, buzzwords are just buzzwords, or we find there is actually a lot of truth behind them. For example, speed of speech, creating knowledge without switching views between an incident in an ITSM tool and the knowledge base. Make the knowledge transfer easy and seamless and reap the rewards. This image is an example of an agent working on an incident and seamlessly browsing the self-service portal for existing solutions based on the incident description. Let's move on and look a little closer at these buzzwords. What is the goal with what we are creating? Everything we know is changing faster and faster. Imagine a process that creates articles at the right time instead of waiting until everything is checked and perfect. Knowledge is organic. It needs to be updated over time, and everyone contributes to this. This is teamwork. 80% of everything we document will never be looked at a second time. We need to put more emphasis on customer demand and needs. What is it that users want? Think about it from their perspective. 
focusing on the end, ex end user experience and timely answers is really important. Traditionally, we create a large variety of knowledge just in case questions may arise. We need to do better and have a process in place where we can quickly respond and meet the real needs early. It's better to start with a smaller amount of articles based on experience and then create new articles as questions are asked. Nine out of ten users want answers now. They do not want to wait until everything is verified and perfect. They want to know what we know as soon as we know it. They prefer finding knowledge quickly with a smaller risk for error rather than waiting for a perfect solution. And this may seem a little bit scary, but it has proven hugely successful. And to help ease your mind, why not be transparent with your users and let them know that certain articles are not totally verified just yet. And of course, don't waste time on articles that you don't know will be demanded in the future. As I said earlier, 80% of all articles are never reused. We don't want to guess. It's way too expensive and inefficient to deal with knowledge this way. So everybody who has rolled out a new system or tool, we know that support will be heavily leaned upon. You may have created a number of articles before the rollout, but do you really know how many of those are reused? Studies show that from the first time a new incident reaches the service desk until the demand is at its peak, it takes about 30 days. After that, it declines. The creating content and the speed of speech while you're working with the customer is how you create valuable knowledge. How long does it take your organization to create a new article and push it out to self-service? If it takes less than 30 days, then well done. Unfortunately, this is not the norm. It might take 60 or even 90 days. And in some cases, articles are not created at all. Creating articles after 38, 30 days do not generate that much value. Ideally, this is how the workflow for knowledge should be handled. Work in progress. Here's where we begin to create an article by capturing the customer context. Draft. Here we begin the solution and describing the case after the first question. Approved. Here we're publishing knowledge internally in the support organization and pending approval for self-service. And published. Now we have posted it to the customer and made it available to them through a self-service portal. So working with KCS means making the solutions to problems available internally in the organization as soon as it occurs. And you get the knowledge out to the customers at an early stage. It puts less, less pressure on the support, which results in a happier service desk. More satisfied customers as resolution time is shortened. And management will be more satisfied since we are shifting left, which provide cost savings. Create articles as you're solving problems. It can be a big challenge to get agents to initiate an article while the customer is in their ear. Create a work in progress article. This requires them to also be able to manage the conversation. So this is a skill to look for. Social skills are a big part of the support employees. Do you have the technology to do this today? It should be something to strive for. May it be that this is something that you're doing already today? So if we're improving and creating knowledge based on demand, we are capturing the customer context in articles. And then we're doing this in the incident process. So what we're going to look at now is the UFA model. It stands for use it, flag it, fix it, add it. And it is the recommended daily incident workflow based on KCS. UFA makes it as easy as possible for the support team. So let me briefly describe how it works. 
So a question comes into the service desk. Perhaps we know that this is a reoccurring question. We can simply click on a quick click function and use the solution to close the incident. However, if a question comes up that we don't know, then we begin to search the knowledge base. Do you find an article that is relevant? If no, we ask for, for more information from the customer. The search continues and may need to be escalated further. Perhaps a second or third line will continue working on the problem. The key here it is to write down the problem in the customer's own words, solve the problem, and add it to the knowledge base. Now instead, if you find an article when searching and it seems correct and complete, then we use it and we solve the problem immediately. We can keep working. But if you find an article when searching and something is missing, and you also have the permission to update articles and you know the answer, then you fix it at once, get the article in the knowledge base, and you resolve. However, if you don't have permission to edit the article, or you're not completely sure of the solution, then we flag it instead so that someone who knows can quickly look over the article and get the answer to the customer. Content health is also very important. And these bullets here are important tasks to monitor and to follow. How many incidents are connected to a certain article in the knowledge base? And vice versa, how many articles are connected to an incident? There are many ways to measure and be especially careful when archiving is the volume really the issue? Let's consider how Google works. Now almost everything can be found through Google, but it's your own modifications and your own touch-ups that really provide the value and the results. Time efficient, consistent answers, less inaccurate answers, and less follow-up questions. Remember, what is it that customers want? As we said earlier, 91% of customers really do prefer self-service if it is available and tailored to their own needs. And when it comes to articles, supplement article text with images and even sometimes with short videos when demand for the article is high. Present the help using all these various media since we all have different learning styles. Some prefer reading while others are more visual learners. Use keywords that searches trigger on and tag articles with the appropriate keywords. This could be misspelled words. It could also be different names for the same thing. For example, VPN and Citrix could both be words used to represent the same, same thing. And use this customer search logs to aid you and help you. So helping others, it's rewarding and something that people like to do. It's important to not forget having some fun along the way. We're working with articles and support materials, so we should create a culture that engages and motivates our colleagues to share knowledge, to collaborate, and create relevant articles. There are several ways to achieve this, and here are some engaging activities. We're more social online than ever privately. Bringing this to the workplace is a natural step and something many will appreciate. In our case, teamwork, collaboration, and helping are keys to success. Our internal drive and desire to share, like, and appreciate
can really help us. It is in our nature that we want to make our voice heard. And opinions and recommendations from others really helps promote trust. Promoting collaboration and teamwork through social recognition is becoming more and more the norm. Although we must not overlook the importance of communicating the what's in it for me to the contributors and also to show them the big picture impact their work and collaboration has on the entire organization. How many of us are playing games? Maybe on our phones? Most games have built-in motivators. You get confirmation, you level up, you obtain badges, for example. A term used when implementing these at the workplace is gamification. So what is it that makes us feel that sense of pride? It is the effort that we put behind it. It's not always the result. What we do gives us a sense of achievement, satisfaction, and sometimes reward. Seeing the big picture results are also rewarding, but they more reinforce the work that we put in. So build in digital motivators into your everyday tasks. And do observe that leaderboards are something to approach with caution, but with, when done right, it can be very effective. So in some cases, focusing more on the team than the individual. Make it fun. Reward learning and sharing knowledge. We currently gamify parts of our tool, Come Around Knowledge, to visualize the good work that our knowledge heroes do. Measure to visualize improvements and see the progress. Make sure the knowledge workers see the results of the great things they do. We keep talking about communicating what's in it for me, and this is really a strong motivator, especially when related to big picture achievements for the organization. Workers feel a sense of pride when shown how their contributions help impact the entire organization. We have to be open to new metrics. Self-service will affect other metrics, other common metrics. For example, the solution rate usually drops in the staff support because many easy, repetitive questions are picked up and solved by the customers themselves directly in self-service. And rather, the more fun, challenging questions remain with the support team. So. It's important to measure both self-service and the staff support to get the relevant figures. They should all be accounted for. Now, some other measures to include is the amount of new versus known questions. So there will be more new questions for first line. In fact, 70% of questions will be new when practicing KCS. Time to publish. How long it takes new issues to be posted to the web self-service? Self-service use. The percentage of customers who use the web self-service before opening an incident. And self-service success. The percentage of times that customers find what they need on the web self-service, meaning there's no need for a new incident to be created. So seeing these results and how they lead to higher customer satisfaction and loyalty will really help motivate your team. The possibilities are endless with the right tools, the right training, and the right management strategies. I've given you quite a bit of information today. And I hope that you feel inspired and you want to learn more. If I had to sum it all up into one important point to remember, then it would have to be that it's a journey. It's not a destination.
it is not something we do as an additional project on top of the way that we're working today and the things that we do. Instead, this is an improvement on how we work. So before we get into the questions, I want to briefly summarize some of the talking points here today. So I want to encourage you to explore your iceberg and consider ways to create more value to users. View knowledge as a key asset. It's so crucial for any organization. Make the leap from good to great. Update knowledge based on customer demand. Don't try to guess. It is an expensive and inefficient habit. Create a knowledge base with the collective experience because the more we share, the more we learn. Motivation is so important and taking the time to recognize teams and adding some fun to the daily work goes a long way and make sure that everyone knows what's in it for them. And lastly, build a strong collaboration and sharing culture. So I see here we have received a lot of questions during the webinar. And if I run out of time answering all these questions directly, you will hear back from me with the unanswered questions in an email shortly. We also want to recommend that you join the LinkedIn group here listed to share experience, ask questions, and to keep the conversation going. So let's see here some of the questions. So I have one here about how to show the value in money, in money saved that comes from it. Let me read the question here. How to identify which metrics make sense for your organization and how to show the value in money saved that comes from it. So there's a lot of recommended metrics there. And I think in order to show the value, um, looking at an executive level, um, anytime you're talking about executive measures, you need to include money. So cost savings, cost avoidance. Um, and actually we can show that we are changing the ratio of support costs to revenue. So if we can reduce the ratio of support cost to revenue and also improve customer and employee loyalty, what's not to like about that? Let's see here, what else? Okay, here's another one. How do you get buy-in to the employees of the service desk? So we, we've covered quite a, quite a few parts here on uh, buy-in from the employees of the service desk. And I think some of the key points there are to uh, simplify their work and set it up so that it is the easiest, fastest, and most efficient way of working for them. Integrations, for example, is a great way to enable them to work with knowledge, to capture knowledge as a natural part of their daily work. And motivate the employees and make it fun. So some popular things and, and best practices there is to let the actual employees in the service desk to design the workflow and the guidelines and the content standard in terms of knowledge articles. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have one about um, KCS courses. So if you're interested in learning more about KCS, um, Comround does hold workshops and trainings for KCS. Um, and we also, of course, have a great collaboration with uh, the Consortium for Service Innovation, who are the people 
uh, behind KCS. And I know that they have quite a few trainers, trainers around in the United States, for example, and around the rest of the world as well. Um, so we can definitely make sure to let you come into contact with, with them as well. I think that's all of the questions. Let's see if we have any other ones. I see that we have another question here about sharing the slide deck and, and I see that we have an answer there also. But so everybody knows we will share the, the presentation uh, when we send out the, the follow-up email after the, after the webinar. So yes, you will receive a recording and you will also uh, receive some additional information for that as well. So those are all the questions that we had. So I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this webinar and to me today. I hope it has been worthwhile. And you're more than welcome to contact me directly if you want to talk. And I want to wish you all a nice rest of the day. <laughs>